Ta- by Mr. Tazbot. That'll be coming up, hopefully, after this Portal 2 run, uh, if we can get that $225,000 incentive. Right now, we're sitting at $170,000. Means we got another 55000 or so to go. What do you think? Can we do it? All right. Okay, so let's hear about this Portal 2 run featuring Baster09, a longtime runner and community member who's going to be blind reacting for us all on the couch tonight and can't even, one of the top runners and has been in the community for over half a decade and Amlug, this task literally could not exist without them. Get ready to magnetize your eyes to the screen because it's time for Portal 2! Hi, hello, games done quick. How are we doing tonight? All right, good to hear. As Mello so kindly introduced, I'm Ken Even, longtime runner of Portal 2, first time Tasser. Uh, over here we have Mlug. Introduce yourself real quick. Hey, yep, I'm Mlug. I'm mainly on the uh, kind of R&D team of the Portal 2 speedrun community. Uh, I've been working on these tasking tools over the past year with a couple other people in the community. We're really excited to show this for you tonight. And we've got Base 09. Yep, I'm Baster9. I am a long-term runner of this game as well. And most importantly, I have not seen a vast majority of the tasks. So I'm going to be watching it first time with all of you today. All right, with that out of the way, I think we've been talking long enough. So let's get this task started. Um, for those of you not familiar with Portal 2 speedrunning time, we'll start when we gain control of the character here real quick. So I'll give a countdown here. Three, two, one, go! All right, so uh, now that we're started here, Emlug, do you want to explain kind of what's going on? Yeah, so for anyone who doesn't know, TAS stands for Tool Assisted Speedrun. That means that this speedrun is basically being done by the computer using pre programmed inputs rather than by a human. This is actually the first ever TAS of the full Portal 2 single player campaign. The reason for that is that until very recently, we actually didn't have the tools available to make them. Um, last year, I was working with Kersey Hammond and Blender 9 huge shout out to those guys on the tools to make them, and we started this project. Um, this is following the rules of the like normal category that people run RTA. It's inbounds, no SLA, so that means we have to stay in the bounds of the map all the time, and we aren't allowed to abuse quick saves to perform glitches, which for this just means we won't be using saves at all. Right, and a quick note about this run that I want to clarify before we get any further. Unfortunately, there's a lot of RNG in Portal 2, and even with brilliant minds like Mluck, we have not been able to solve all of that RNG. So a live playback here for you would be impossible. Uh, so we are just playing back a video, which we have pre-recorded. But all of this is a live playback, just recorded and stitched together. So fear not. Uh, let's see. So right here in this cutscene here, really long cutscene, luckily, we've been able to mod the game uh, to give you a little bit of a tutorial, let's say, for some of the stuff that we will be showcasing here. So. Uh, let's talk about movement in Portal 2 in all Source games. Normally, the game expects you to go forward. Uh, however, in Source games, if you kind of go to the side, uh, like turning a little bit in air, you can gain more speed. This is called strafing, air strafing. And if you go to the side, you know, right and left, back and forth, you can gain speed as long as you're jumping around the ground. And this is what humans do to bunny hop. But a TAS is a lot better than a human, as you may know. So using a lot of math and a lot of code, uh, the task can actually strafe left and right, back and forth, 60 times a second. And the end result uh, makes that look like it's going in a straight line. But rest assured, it is bunny hopping. Now let's talk about another crucial element of the game. So imagine a bus. Except the bus is actually an elevator at the end of every level. As you're going along this bus or down the elevator, there are stops every few seconds. And as long as GLaDOS or whoever else is talking to you, you can't get off on your bus stop. You have to wait until GLaDOS is done talking to you, and then you get off on the next bus stop. If GLaDOS stops talking to you, and there's not a bus stop for four seconds, you lose four seconds. So in Portal 2, the optimal thing to do is get on the bus at the right time when GLaDOS is talking to you, and that way you time it so that GLaDOS stops talking to you right before you get off on a stop, and you don't lose any time. Um, so that kind of just explains why, in a lot of maps, we won't be entering the elevator as soon as possible. 
Uh, instead, you'll be waiting actually a little bit to enter the elevator. So that's a very common question when watching Portal 2 speedruns. Waiting to enter the elevator doesn't lose time. Uh, I just want to clear that up. And uh, there's a little bit of time left in this cutscene. I think Emlog has some stuff to go over. Uh, yeah. So in the bottom left of the screen, you'll see a little like controller image. That's a input display. So that's a visual representation of the inputs the task is doing. So when we're strafing, you'll see the analog stick on the left, the movement stick, like flipping back and forth really, really quickly, and it's strafing. Uh, on that note, I should mention um, this run has a few bits of fast movement, so the analog stick, like I say, will be flicking really back and, fo back and forth really fast. Um, also, in a few places, there's like very fast rotations and things, so if you're like particularly sensitive to that kind of um, video, um, your discretion's advised. There's nothing too serious, and we'll warn if there's anything. Yeah. Like, it really is, uh, for the most part, coming up, nothing but, too yeah. serious. But again, we'll go to note. Uh, now, uh, there's a few things, a few names I want to shout out. Obviously, Emlog and I here are not the only two people in the world who have created this task. Tassing is a team effort, and we have a very big team here at the Portal 2 Task team that I would just like to thank real quick. I have a list of names. All right. Thanking for script making, we have Burger40, Zy Martin, AMJ, myself, Seer, Blenderista9, Kersey Howe, Lucas Skywalker, Emlog, Rainbow, Trick, and also any other people who have uh, contributed very small amounts or contributed in routing. Thank you for your help in making this task. Without the effort of the whole team, it would not have been possible. And a uh, special thank you uh, for coding for Emlug, Kersey Howe, Rainbow, Blender East 09, David, and Sony. They have done a lot of work behind, even more behind the scenes, coding the tools that we use to code the tasks. So, round of applause for them as well. And lastly, thank you to the one Portal 2 developer who has been uh, updating this game for the past two years. You know who you are. All right, uh, now that we're here in the vault, Emlug, what's going on? Yeah, so this is another bit of cutscene, but it's more fun because we can throw things around. Uh, Normally, the speedrun, we start with a save that's at the end of this cutscene. So we're five minutes in, and the RTA run hasn't even started yet. Shout out to Blender for that throw you just saw a second ago. Um, but in a couple of seconds, the actual run will be starting when this portal opens. Um, real gameplay here. Yeah. Once the portal opens, the run will start for real. Well, like half for real. It doesn't really start till we get the portal gun, as you know. But here we go. As you can see, uh, look in the bottom left corner of that screen. The task is absolutely going hog wild strafing here. Oh, really? You guys think that's impressive? Jesus. Okay. <laughs> anyway, yeah, a lot of the movement here is just going to look a bit weird, a bit different than normal if you've seen a normal Portal 2 speedrun. All right, this map here, this is the first map with a fun glitch. Uh, I actually helped task this map. We can grab that cube under the glass, throw it through a portal, and then throw it over this glass, and get to the end without even entering a room. And right here is a good example of the stuff about dialogue we mentioned. As you can see, we are absolutely zooming to this elevator. It's really important we get there as fast as possible. I promise you, this is take perfect. This is as fast as you can possibly go. It really yeah. is, we checked. So yeah, entering the elevator as soon as possible uh, is not important. Right here, this is the first map where we'll be getting the portal gun. These are really about to speed up here, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we could like try and explain what's happening, but we think it's easier if you just yeah, just watch. can do. If you feel that a lethal military android has not respected your rights as detailed in the laws of robotics. So that was, uh, the technical term is a non-apple peeker portal. That means basically we shot nine portals while looking through one portal, but not quite passing through it. Yeah. And all as fast as possible. Would I offset. Just about human possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Um, this is another quite crazy one. Not even going to try and explain this. Um, we're now at the end. We pass through. There are like three rooms there. We don't really use one of them. We don't really use any of them. Um, we just kind of really do whatever we want at this point. We used a couple of seam shots there combined with peak portals and a cube clip at the end to clip through the ceiling. Except this map is just going to be the normal route that we do in full games. So, yeah. A little bit of a change of pace there. As impressive as it looks, that probably only saves a second over what humans do. Just, you know, shout outs for us mortals here. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Low-power environments of as few as 1.1 yeah. um, volts. Yeah, and then the rest of Chapter 1, honestly, it kind of... Well, I shouldn't say it cools down, because it's about to heat up real fast. Uh, I helped test this map, you know, a little cheeky portal right there. You can shoot it in that room because uh, I guess Valve wanted you to. No other explanation. This button right here 
if you get on it and then get off it, tick perfectly, it can stay on, so you don't even need a cube. And we're at the end. Oh, Emlog, what is he about to do? Uh, yeah, so here we're just going to click through the bottom of the elevator. There is no reason for this. It just looks funny. It doesn't save any time. We're going to stay at the bottom of the elevator shaft still. You can technically do this with like all of the elevators that move down, but there's not really much point. We're going to do it later to actually we'll save time. We'll do it one time to save time. Right. Okay, uh, this map, Emlog, do you want to get it? Yeah, so here we're going to get a really precise shot through the door. That's called a pancake shot. Um, you probably didn't catch it, but it is in incredibly sm a small gap. Uh, right here, we're actually going to do the first wrong warp in the run. Uh, so here, the game transitioned level, and we weren't where the game expected us to be, which means the position it took us to was uh, a slightly strange place. Yeah, that skip um, has only ever been done by a human once. Shout yeah. out to my boy Mel. Mel. Shout out to Mel. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there we were able to preserve a velocity, get over an invisible wall, and land in the middle of the map, skipping half of it. Yeah. But we can't skip this cutscene. Yeah, yeah, right here's a cutscene. We're going to do some crazy stuff later. Uh, but for now, Mello, if you have anything to say, you know, kind of decompress, now would be a good time. Yeah, absolutely. Take Chris Pay donates $25 and says, Portals, how do they work? Also, let's get that bonus game. Absolutely. Yeah. We only have a Portas accident here. Oh, we can't be the only one. Don't be the only one. Absolutely. Yeah. We also have a $10 donation from Blender, who says, don't forget that French saves 10 ticks. Oh, so true, true. Blender, so And true. then one more anonymous $1,000 donation. Oh. Here's 1,000 rupees towards the Ocarina of Time showcase. That's right. And right now, we're still, oh, we're un, just about $50,000 away from that showcase. Can we do it? We can absolutely do it. I Woo. think we can do it. So um, in this part of the task, actually, as the elevator is about to come up, we're going to do some very precise jumps off of this elevator to jump right over this invisible wall and kind of get out of the chain we get out of the chamber that is the cutscene. Shoutouts to Unity, by the way. Those inputs are directly taken from his former Fizzler Inter world record. Just funny, doesn't matter, we have time to kill. So, anyway, yeah, and look, yeah. what's going on here? Right here, what we're going to do is we drop the clipboard on top of the incinerator, and we're going to do a slightly weird glitch. So in a few seconds, a cutscene's going to happen where Gladys picks us up with like a robot arm and drops us into this incinerator. But when that happens, uh, the player model doesn't actually move. Instead, it's only the camera that does. So the player will still be standing on top of the incinerator. So if we're already standing there, as soon as it opens, we can fall in and trigger the um, like transition to the next map immediately. However, uh, without the clipboard, the, in, that wouldn't work because the incinerator doors actually pull us along. But the physics are a bit broken, so if you're standing on a clipboard, that doesn't happen. Um, so this is that cutscene I was talking about. You can see now Gladys is like holding us, but our body is still standing on the incinerator. When we get to the incinerator, well, you'll be able to see the blue light of the portal gun, which is still part of the player model. So we'll yes, see that there. True. And you'll also actually be able to see the player model in third person, which is uh, really weird if you've never seen anything yeah. like it. A rare occurrence. Yeah. Uh, and look, did you so, mention how yeah, this trick fun, makes you invincible? Yes, a fun side effect of this trick is you get invincibility. So during this cutscene view, uh, the game makes you invincible to stop you from dying in cutscenes. But because you saw there, like, the level ended early, and we were never taken out of that weird camera control thing, so it never got rid of that invincibility. So for the entire rest of the run, we will be invulnerable to pretty much all forms of damage, the only exception being a couple of hits of goo in Chapter 6. Don't yeah. worry, it's weird. That'll come in handy later. Yeah. Uh, so this map right here is where we get the dual portal gun. And, you know, as you saw, when we got the single portal gun, things were kind of crazy. So now we get the dual portal gun, and now we've ended the level. It's really that simple. That was just a really quick seam shot. Happens to be a seam from the beginning of the level to the end of the level. Tass hits it, no problem, doesn't even break a sweat. You actually don't now, need to do it that fast because we're waiting on dialogue here Yeah, it again. doesn't save any time. It's just cool. It does skip the entire level. There's a lot of rooms there, I promise. Yeah. yeah. Play the game yourself if you want to find it. Yeah, we played the game yet. We are skipping most of it, so you still have a chance. That's true. Yeah, true. There's no spoilers this run. Here we have laser intro. Uh, this map is really simple. That's actually just about humans do, but done really, really quickly. We do introduce lasers in the next couple chambers, but we don't use any of them yet, so... Yeah, yeah. I think uh, laser intro, there's no lasers, and then dual lasers, there's one laser. Yep. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Triple lasers, one laser, too. Oh, well, we don't talk about triple laser. This map is laser stairs, and here we actually... So you won't have caught it, because it was way too quick, but we actually got a camera and put it on the button. Uh, that's a really interesting trick where... 
Uh, it doesn't activate the button, but what it does do is activate the end dialogue for the map, just because there's some slightly broken map logic. And because dialogue matters much more than actually reaching the elevator, that saves time. Yep, a lot of times the goal isn't to end the map as fast as possible, but to activate the end dialogue. Get exactly. Get talking as fast as possible so we can get on that bus. Yeah, that's a huge point, Baster. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, really activating the ending dialogue is 99% of the time the goal for any speedrunner, human, or task. In that map, we did a thing called a laser switch glitch, where if you a activate one laser immediately after another for a couple ticks, both will be on. Yeah, that's really useful uh, in a lot of maps with lasers. This okay. map. Yeah, and look at this. Yeah, this one's laser over goo. This is very, very fast. Um, basically, what happens here is um, we're done. Um, yeah. Basically, we press the button. That spawned a, a cube inside of a pipe that we, that's animated. Um, we shot a portal in a weird place we're not meant to be able to. We did two re portals to get a bunch of speed through the cube across the room, and we were at the end, and all of that in about half a second. And then conversely, this is going to be literally just the route that humans do full game. Yeah. Again, right here, putting that camera on that button activates that button. Even though it's not a cube, uh, the button will activate the dialogue for any object on it and not just a cube. So activating the ending dialogue saves probably about at least eight seconds here. Because we're still waiting for the dialogue. Yes, yeah, still waiting. All that. Uh, so just activating that dialogue is much more important than actually getting to the end as quickly as possible. Uh, this next map, we're going to bunny hop backwards because uh, we wanted to, really. I think that's yeah, all. it doesn't save time or anything. It's no slower either, so uh, portal one throwback. Funny. Yeah. You know what does save time, though? Uh, this task is about to do a very, very task-only strafe just up there to this wall. That is very, very much not what you're supposed to do. That skips out. Yeah, very impressive if task uh, could break a sweat. And there we bounce off the ball to avoid having to have that bounce over. So we save two entire rides around that room. And this elevator is actually interesting because the GLaDOS talks for such a long time and the elevator moves faster than most other elevators. So we're going to actually hit the bottom of the elevator shaft, hit a fail safe there that'll make sure the game loads the next level, even if GLaDOS is talking because it assumes something broke. So we've been in the elevator so long. So yeah, that's the one case where it's fastest to just get in the elevator as quickly as possible. Yeah, the rides are not supposed to be that long. Uh, Emma, do you want to get this? Yeah, sure. This map is pit flings. Here we've just done a thing called a super re-portal. Um, basically there, if you get stuck... We didn't actually explain re properly. Basically, if you shoot a portal while you're coming out of one, you get 200 velocity to stop you from getting stuck in weird places. If you're stuck in the floor while you do that, which we can do in a few ways, then you can just build up more and more speed and then eventually release it by shooting a portal under you. There's going to be a lot of those throughout the run. Yeah. Unfortunately, it does mean we skip the companion cube, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, what a shame. Well, at least the companion cube didn't die. This That's true. Yeah. All right, that map, uh, real nice, just quick and simple. Because the chamber is sort of being built by GLaDOS, you can shoot a little bit under the panels here, uh, under the floor. And this is as far as I've seen, so all this is completely yeah, actually, new to me. Everything okay, yeah. from the rest of this is going to be completely new to Baster, so uh, we'll check in on you for your reactions to kind of see what we're going on here. So this is Ceiling Catapult. Uh, we just did a thing called Ceiling Skip, where we get on top of this rubble here, which means that as soon as this panel in front of us comes down, we're going to be able to jump onto it. Um, that skips along cutscene where Gladys fixes the faith plate. We then get to grab this laser cube, drop the laser there, and here we do a thing called angled portal abuse. Um, basically, portals on like angled surfaces are broken, and if you walk into them in a specific way, you can get a bunch of speed. There, we used it to boost us into the door, which skips waiting for the stairs in front Enjoy of the door to come up, because that takes a few more seconds. I'm going to go to the yeah, there's a lot of ways to get a lot of speed, and TAS has absolutely no reservations about using absolutely any of them. Uh, speaking of it right here, right now we're just going to fling through here, redirect our speed off of this cube, throw it in midair, huge bounce, very, very TAS only. It looks very impressive. Shoutouts to Lucas for getting that one. Also, shoutouts to Zay for um, routing it. Oh, yeah, Zay found that. Originally, yeah. Yeah. Oh, this map is really impressive. Uh, Emlock, want to get it? Yeah, sure. So this map is bridge intro. Here, it's going to go very fast, and you won't be able to see what's happening. But we got a camera. We use it to clip through the glass. We then grab the cube, manage to clip it through the glass, and we're done. The, the dialogue's happening. We jump into the goo because we can, because it doesn't kill us. Because that, that camera clip. Earlier. Yeah, that camera clip through the glass uh, took an absolutely incredibly long time to get. Right. Yeah, it was almost impossible because of the, some of the RNG stuff. That's one of the few bits of RNG we did manage to solve. Yeah. Sort of. Well, sort of. Sort of. Well, I mean. Again, thank you to Mlog for actually solving that. <laughs> and then, uh, let's see, bridge the gap here. Believe it or not, what the task is about to do, again, is kind of the human route. It's just going to go very fast. It's a, not quite the human route. Uh, we actually don't land there, so we did two re-portals, um, which got us a bunch of speed, flew across the room, grabbed the cube, and chucked onto the button. Yeah, so I don't, it's similar yeah, to the human route. So much speed, really, going through Clearly very simple there. Very of course, simple. yeah. 
Yeah, yeah Tass just re-portals and like super re-portals and does like object boosts. Tass, oh, speaking of speed. Okay, I think we should probably just let this map speak for itself. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, Huge shout out to Luke and Safe figuring that one out. I'm pretty sure the invincibility there did not and, help at okay, all. Okay, immediately no. after, this map is kind of crazy. Uh, that boost right there does not look like much. That took two months. Yeah, uh, humans are not out. even close to getting that. That was like... That's insane. That not only Tass only, that was like probably the most difficult single glitch to like get because yeah. it was so precise. We dubbed that the Omega Boost and there is no hope of a human ever getting it. No, don't even try. What's important is it's a present. Thank you, Gladys. I kind of forgot you were talking there. Uh, turret blocker. Anything special about this right. map? Uh, no, this is actually the same route that humans do in individual level rounds, believe it or not. Uh, just obviously done very, very quickly. It's a bit of a cube throw there. Yeah, a little bit yeah. of a cube throw. Uh, task can, actually, Tass is really good at cube throws because you can throw it way further than you normally can. Are you saying that when you pre-program the inputs, you can do it better than humans? Uh, well, I, I might be suggesting I'd that. hope so, yeah. Uh, let's see, is this map what I think? Oh, this, speaking of cube throws, actually, yeah. This map, oh, yeah. Uh, it's just going to do two cube throws, throw that cube onto a button that's there, I promise. Throw that laser, or throw that cube into a laser that's there, I promise. It redirects the laser. second, it's yeah. in the right place. Just long enough for us to get through the door. We promise everything happened, uh, you just can't see it because it happened too fast. That's a common theme here. Yeah, that really is a common theme. It's a... Uh, we, we would have wanted to show you, but we genuinely can't. It goes by too fast. Speaking of which, um, this is Paul the Rug. Here, what we do is we put the cube through the pole, and because portals are broken, we get a huge boost. We then use the bridge to kind of adjust our height a little bit and get to the end. Yeah. Uh, did Zy Martin route that and tacit or just... Uh, I believe both. Yeah. yeah, I think it was his idea. There's a lot of routing work that goes behind the scenes tasting because obviously most of these routes we had to find ourselves. It's not like there was a tutorial... Speaking of routing... Um, so this map is Column Blocker, and it's kind of crazy. Um, this route, uh, Baser does actually know this one, okay, uh, cool. because this one, we made it public because humans can do it. But what's going to happen here, after we jump out of this room, we're going to do a really precise shot into this observation room. We shoot some portals, and we end up here by the elevator. Uh, we got stuck, and the game thought that the best way to free us was to teleport us there. And also, that clip through the elevator actually saves time. Well, yeah, because like there's a 30-second 30 30 cutscene in that map, which is skips. The only map in the game, it saves time. time. Yeah, in this map, we are just going to have a lot of velocity all the time. So grab that cube, pre-place it so that it's not actually aimed there. Just drop this cube down. They're going to land, I promise. And then use that camera, redirect our speed out of the portal, right into the end right of the door. Into the door. Thank you, Cy Martin, for getting that, because I could not. I did not have it in me to do that. I can't even stream this for like hours trying to get that boost. Yeah, it was, it's bad. Uh, triple laser, this map, there's a seam shot right there. It saves, I think, two ticks. Uh, but aside from that, we just laser switch. They're basically getting the, ourselves and the cube to the end of the map as quickly as possible, and quickly enabling all the lasers. Shout out to Kirby, Kirby Howe, of course. Yeah, shout out to Kirby cool. for triple laser. Uh, Baster, what are you thinking of this task so far now that you're uh, kind of seeing some of it for the first time? I'm thinking it's fast. There's a lot of object boosts and flings that I'm just not ready for. You're not ready for it? Can you even understand? Because you're a portal runner. Can you understand what's going on? A lot of on? it I have a general idea of what's going on because I know what you need to do to end the level. And I kind of can see what you're doing, but like turret intro, flying through the portals, I have no idea where any of them were. Right, yeah. So right here we're on Jailbreak. This is the start of the escape sequence in the game. Uh, this bit of the game is actually going to be a lot of just movement. So you can see like the movement analog on the controller going crazy. Um, uh, so a lot of hopping around here. This is going to mark the end of that map there. We're now on the next map. Um, this again is mostly movement, but there is actually going to be a kind of interesting trick here. We're going to grab one of these turrets. Um, and here, this game's a bit broken. Specifically, the physics engine is broken. And you can throw objects into yourself to get speed. Um, which breaks zero laws of physics. So we throw that tire into ourselves a total of five times to get an absolutely crazy amount of speed there. Saves about a second and a half over not doing it, which is like a lot of time. And that was found pretty recently, wasn't it? Yeah, Maybe that like, was found by uh, Berger, thought of that. Yeah, like a month like, ago? Something like that. Yeah, we were actually working, um, we were working on this task a lot more recently. Anyway, right here, Berger is currently doing a setup so that the first tick of this map, you can shoot through the door again, very precise shot, to completely skip it opening. And then this skip right here skips the entire flashlight cutscene where Wheatley uh, turns on his flashlight. Which is uh, why this map is quite dark. We've yeah, actually upped the brightness artificially so you can see it. Yeah. Uh, but aside from that, the map is just bunny hopping. Uh, anything particular of note, you think? Uh, well, there's... Like, this jump here is something 
that humans don't do, but and there's a couple bits like that, but it's mostly just the same stuff humans do, but obviously done very, very quickly. It's yeah. like that jump there. But yeah, this is very simple. We do some really quick portaling around the room. Um, Actually, at the end here, our task is going to do something very funny. Because it saves probably like a quarter of a second, we can do a quick super re portal there to get through the door. Yeah, which means nothing. as soon as the door opens, we can do straight through it. Yeah, It's fast, but it also looks funny, which is important. Yeah, honestly, probably more important. Uh, uh, yeah, this map. This is your segment. Oh, yeah, this map is my segment. Uh, I remember this. This took a long time because this is on one of the longer maps. Right here at the beginning, that was all just movement to get over here. Uh, but now here, we're going to grab one of these defective turrets. And if you've played the game before, you'll know that you have to put the defective turret in the turret scanner. But we are going to completely ignore that. Just going to jump on them, jump on them again, jump on these beams kind of outside of the normal playable area, but still in bounds and completely skip that part, that section of the game. And then the rest of the map is just bunny hopping. Quick donation time? Uh, yeah, like one. Sure, CZ Martin donates 49.57, says, this was an incredibly fun project to be a part of, and I want to thank everyone involved, including everyone who believed and everyone who was skeptical that we could get under a certain number barrier. This is a really big milestone for the game, and I'm sure community can bring this time to even lower in the future with even more wild skips and even more wild routes. P.S. Shout out to Ocu, Ocu Boinkle, which went completely unnoticed despite being hyped for weeks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, shout out to Zybarton. He was able to, he was actually did this route. Uh, neurotoxin sabotage. Normally in this map, you would uh, cut the tubes of the neurotoxin generator, and then you'd have to wait kind of for like 10 seconds to open the door. However, Mlug, uh, what's yeah, going on here? Yeah, so here, um, we're actually going to hop through this door, and um, so we're going to shoot a portal right up here and grab the chair. We're going to use the chair to boost ourselves upwards and go through this portal. Behind the door at the end is the trigger to take you to the next level, but that's never at, that's always turned on. So we can jump straight behind the door and hit it right there. You're not meant to be able to go through moving portals, uh, so they're quite broken, which is why we can get through it so easily. Anyway, here we've got onto a cutscene map. Um, this map is Tube Ride. Um, so, actually, Mello, this would be a great time if you have anything to say. Uh, we have a few minutes of waiting here. Oh, I have plenty to say, don't worry. <laughs> we still need just over $42,000 to get that Ocarina of Time Taskbot beta showcase. Got love for that in the crowd? Yeah, yeah. I believe it. I believe we can make it. Yeah, we can do it. Aperture Science donates $25, and they say, the Enrichment Center would like to remind you that donating right now would greatly enhance the testing that is done at Summer Games Done Quick. Don't you want to advance science? Taskbot does. Look into Taskbot's eyes. Do you want to disappoint Taskbot? No, you don't. So please donate. Science and Taskbot will thank you. So this map here is core. It's, again, mostly cutscene, but there's going to be some action kind of in the middle. Um, we have a lot of time for donations. Uh, we'll yeah. let you know when there's oh, like yeah. actual stuff happening. For this sure. Is just a cut scene. OK, yeah. well, we have an anonymous $1,000 donation. Saying, came to see the robot overlord actually be the robot overlord. Please remember slash spare me, Tass. And we also have another $50 donation from Kalazi5, who says, I, for one, welcome our new Tazbot overlord. And then finally, we also have a $25 donation from Mayan, who says, here's $25 for the Ocarina of Time Taz run. Anything to keep that Tazbot happy, I, for one, welcome our new frame, perfect overlords. A lot of overlords. So now, anybody have an overlord problem? Let me know via donation. Gladys is bringing out the overlords in the chat. Yeah. Can I keep going? Yeah, keep going. OK, Glitherin donates $100. Excited to see the Ocarina of Time beta showcase later. Let's make that happen. Yeah, woo, give it up. Let's make it happen. OK, we also have an anonymous $5 donation who says $5 train hype. Well, hey, I haven't started a $5 train, but what do you think? Should we do like uh, $5 at 35? Um, I think we can do it, yeah. I think we could do 5 at 35. $5 for Ocarina's beta showcase. Yeah, so yeah. We, again, we cannot be the only task. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm Link. personally excited to see it, so y'all better make it happen. You yeah. better make it happen. Link comboing donates $200. Tool-assisted Zelda runs need chat-assisted donation trains. Let's see it. Uh, so around about here, we're actually going to be seeing some action from the pass again, finally. We've dropped the core in there, and now... So you actually can't do re on the floor, but what you can do is... 
Just on floor surfaces, do a weird thing to bump you up and gain a bit more height. Just shoot the opposite pole to what you would for a repoll. So here we're getting more and more height, and in a minute, uh, the stalemate room is going to open, which is the room where we can make the core transfer happen. So I've shot into there. Uh, I, I did this bit, by the way. Uh, yeah, press the button, hopped out of there as quickly as possible. We now have another moment of cutscene. Melo, you can, uh, if any more donations or anything. Any more donations? We have plenty. $500 from MN Golden Eagle. Let's go, Twitch chat. Let's see some wild beta stuff. And again, we're going for a $5 donation train at 35 minutes on the dot. And if you're new to this donation train thing, one of the most... <laughs> I forgot about that. One of the most exciting parts is watching that number skyrocket as everybody presses that button in sync. I would love for you to experience that. So 35 minutes, $5 train. We got a $5 donation from Doug Trio 100. Great name. Enjoying this elevator ride simulator run. $5 to get on the train to more tasks. So, well, speaking of your elevator ride, yeah. Here, we, uh, the game wants us to get in this elevator. Instead, we're going to get on it. Uh, so the game thought we got in the elevator there, but we did it in such a way that we can just hop off the top and we're free. Uh, so this map normally has a long cutscene where Wheatley almost releases you and then goes power mad. Spoilers. Um, At least the foreground is by far the biggest skip in the game. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just a single jump. So here, what we do is a big pre-hop. We get under the elevator. So this map normally ends with Wheatley smashing the elevator and you falling down into this pit. But we can just go straight down now. Now it ends with this maniacal laughter, which is more ominous. Uh, quick note about here. This map is just going to be a lot of rotation. Uh, it can be quite dizzying to watch, especially if you're sensitive to those things. So if you are sensitive to those things, uh, I might recommend looking away for a minute. Uh, but that being said, this is just a minute-long cutscene, so uh, this is probably one of the last times that you have to say anything, Mello, because it's just going to be action from this point on. Hey, no problem. I want to make sure that you are applying your donation towards the incentive. And right now, again, after we only have until this run is over to get the, the TaskBot beta showcase of Ocarina of Time. I want to see that. Do you want to see that? I want to see I that. I want to see it. Yeah. I'm going to be the audience for it if it happens. Sir, donates $100 and says, it has been an honor to be a part of the Portal 2 task team. Watching this task grow and evolve over the past year has been a genuine treat. And I am so proud of the end result being showcased today as it shows the hard work that many of the team members have put in over countless hours. Long live the Oiko, the Occupoinko. Donation to Runner's Choice. All right. Thank you. And then we also have Navi says, hey, listen, did you know that you could donate to see a TaskBot beta showcase? $10 train hype! Ooh, I like the idea of a competing $10 train at 36 minutes. Let's see which train wins. Let's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> do it. The which real winner win? is the OOT beta showcase. That's true. Well, the real winner is us. The we real winner see is Doctors Without Borders. That's true. That's so true. true. So about here, we are finally going to get control again. Uh, this map is mostly movement. Uh, so you're going to be a lot of hopping here, some quick portal shots um, to traverse this huge area really quickly. Uh, that long shot in particular, which is literally named long shot. Um, and we hit that button, and now there's this vault door. If you have uh, one quick donation, now might be a good time. One quick donation. OK, Lat Mackey gives us 20 bucks and says, boarding the task bus hype. That was a great hype. Can I get one more? Hype! Y'all are so cute. Nice. Uh, Bailey, now that we're kind of finishing this cutscene up, what do you think of the run so far? I think it's pretty fast. I don't really have much else to say. <laughs> really not, not much else to say? Not much else to say. It's a lot of speed, a lot of good movement, a lot of hops that I didn't even know were task possible. I mean, really? I can read a donation. Uh, uh, no, this map's kind of complicated. Uh, yeah, I'm afraid we're getting onto a fun one now. So here we're going to do uh, that really far away shot. You probably didn't catch it behind that cliff. Uh, you're not meant to be able to do that. And then we did a thing called scripted momentum abuse. The game wants you to get certain flings in a specific way and that it's made so that you can do that and we can abuse that to get loads of speed out of nowhere. Fun fact, that map's called Cave Johnson. Uh, you know who I didn't hear? Cave Johnson? Yeah, we didn't it's hear weird. Cave Johnson. Here he is, though. We're about to, though. All right, let's get started. There he is. Yeah, that's first our favorite Portal 2 character. All right. Uh, now that we're into kind of the first puzzle section of the underground. This map's a little bit crazy, and we don't entirely understand it. Yeah, honestly, um, unless you're Cy Martin, I don't think you understand Yeah, it. there was there was a quantum crouch in there. I think there may have been a report involved. We managed to peek into that room. A quantum crouch, by the way, is when the game thinks you're kind of crouching, so it has your hitbox is small, but your camera is still above your head, basically. 
So you're able to peek inside rooms and shoot poles through ceilings and things. Yeah, stuff. that'll uh, come up, I believe, a few times later in the run. Only yes. Spheres are made of asbestos, by the way. Keeps out the rats. Uh, so, yeah, right here we're getting uh, a seam shot, some more angle portal abuse. We're able to strafe onto this ledge on the side and get straight to the end. Also, at the very start, there was a ju big jump across a gap using a wee bit of slanted geometry, which is quite cool. Uh, humans do do that one, but not the rest of the Only the just, top yeah, it's, it's only like top three or four on the IL boards that can do that. Yeah, yeah, and to be clear, they only do the jump at the start. The rest of it is very TAS only. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, this, speaking of TAS only, wow, we have a yeah. map coming up. Uh, right at the beginning here, this TAS is going to do the most precise team shot in the game, pretty much. And then get the cube, just do a lot of insane flinging to grab the cube, throw it on the button. And finally, just wait uh, what feels like two years to enter the elevator. I wonder how much of this game do you think is like being in an elevator or waiting for an elevator? Of the task, it must be at least 50%. At least 50%. Based on now that you've seen uh, a good bit of the task, how much do you think it is? I think 50% is probably a pretty good estimate. There's so much that you're just activating the dialogue right away and then just waiting. Right. Uh, okay, this map is actually This map is very cool. So here we have potatoes. Uh, this is a skip ingeniously named French fry skip. Um, I, I don't ask why it's stupid. Uh, we got Quantum Crouch and were able to peek straight through that ceiling and fling straight to the end using a Super e -portal. Yeah, I, I don't think any of the Portal 2 runners saw that coming. <laughs> no. I definitely did not. Yeah, because there's a huge, there's a huge uh, kind of watch party in our speedrun server right now. So shout outs to all you Portal 2 runners watching. Oh, this is my favorite map. Oh, yeah, this map's great. Oh, wait, because, pause, wait, wait, pause. wait, wait, wait. Let that's Base Throw 9's oh. input. That's that, the one that, input that he has. Round of applause for him. One input. Round of applause for Base Throw 9. All by myself. Yeah, that is, uh, task could not have been done without that. Clearly, yeah. It was integral. Yeah. Uh, so, now that we're kind of reaching... Oh, wait, this, this is Chapter 7, right? It just goes by so fast. Yeah, it's, it's very quick. Um, so, here we're going to be doing a Super e portal, but we've got a little bit of gel, which means we're able to make it really, really quickly, straight to the end there. Yeah. Um, Believe it or not, that route uh, looks very similar to the human route. I don't even think it saves, like, a huge amount of time. No, probably not. Human route's pretty optimized, yeah. I feel like I'm just repeating myself all. Like, I'm saying, yeah, wow, this task is pretty fast. Yeah. There's not a lot of hope to explain what's going on, because it goes by so fast. If you gave us, like, a few days' worth of time at GDQ, we could probably explain most of it. Yeah, speaking of not being able to explain stuff, uh, I guess I'll just kind of shoutcast this one, uh, this map I worked on a lot. Uh, right at the beginning, after all this movement, we will get stuck in this corner and then do a 15-portal Super E portal, go absolutely flying, shoot a mid-air seam shot through, like, half a pixel, then do get stuck there again, get another Super E portal, and fly straight to the end, which saves about 30 seconds. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Speaking of things being pretty impressive, uh, this is 3-gel. So here we're doing a thing called a stuck launch, where we've got, like, stuck between the pipe and we're building a bunch of downward speed. We boost up to the top, shoot up here, uh, and we'll just launch through this portal. Um, we do need to look at this poster here, otherwise it makes this cutscene really slow. Yeah, know your paradoxes, guys. Yeah. It is actually, you lose four seconds if you don't look at that, so. But now we're deviating from the human route. We're going to come down here again, uh, do another stuck launch, fling up to this area with the white gel, the conversion gel. Uh, we're going to start flinging it around the room in what looks like a really random way, but this is actually really pre-calculated. Uh, a couple of people spent hours in this map. We're able to fling some just through that vault door as it opens. That's allowed us to get it right by the exit stairs, and we're now there. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, that skips a huge section of waiting for the door to open and, like, bunny hopping to the end. What is it, 15 seconds? Something like that. Yeah, big, the, big and the normal out. route skips, like, the elevator. We already skip like a lot in the human route. Yeah. Yeah. Big shout-out to Zy Martin Kersia for figuring that out. Uh, so now we're in Chapter 8. Uh, actually, this whole starting section is a little bit of a cutscene, so if we have one or two more quick donations, now might be a good time. Choo-choo! The, the 35 minute $5 train took off. In like 10 seconds, the $10 train's about to take off. So how about this one? Serial Warrior says, choo-choo, with a $5 donation. We also have Will Gundy donates $200, and they say, beep boop, more tasks, please. Yeah, well, you want more tasks, you have a little bit more. No Panic OK donates $25 and says, five tickets it's for the train. So right here, we chuck the button onto the cube. Uh, cube throw. 
Um, it looked quite slow because it bounces, but it's not. It's, yeah. You have uh, to get to the door before the Cupid's. Yeah. Now, right here, we actually get stuck between the door and the elevator, and that allows us to do that. Uh, just kind of a stuck launch button in reverse, and that skips that very painfully slow elevator. It's so slow. It's like 15, it, 20 seconds. It's unreasonably there. slow. I don't know what they were thinking with that. And break your poor Wheatley's glass there. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't save any time or anything. It's just funny. I actually can self lock if you do it at the wrong time, which is funny. Yeah. yeah. Luckily, Luckily, it looks I don't like think we did. has that problem. Yeah. Uh, we do still have to do this map twice, unfortunately. Uh, currently, no way to skip that. And then right here in Chapter 8, you'll see we kind of wait around a lot in very specific places. There's going to be a few more dialogue skips. I don't know if you could catch it there. I was talking over it. But Gladys kind of interrupted Wheatley. A lot of that stuff is more common in Chapter 8, so you'll be seeing some very weird things. Most of that is dialogue skips, which kind of save time invisibly. If you're that one saves about like a second, so... Yeah. So... This map here is a really important one, actually, because it's the first time I've put the funnel. Uh, funnels allow us to get fly. So when you crouch or uncrouch in a funnel, basically the game gets confused. It thinks you're in two funnels. Uh, then when you get out of it, it thinks you're still in one, so it doesn't give you gravity back, so we can fly. And this effect is actually going to preserve between levels, which is really useful. Um, so at the start of the next map, you'll actually see us jump up in the elevator at the very start here. Yeah, because like flying, flying is pretty useful, as it turns out. Yeah. Uh, great shot. Uh, it's a shot on the great. It's hilarious. Okay. Yeah. yeah, very um, we, well yeah, done. get that cube, chuck it up there, use it to move down and funnel it onto the button. Yeah, a lot of the Chapter 8 maps uh, are kind of completely crazy because of the fly that you can have. It really it seems crazy, but the developers did not expect you to be able to fly. It's weird. It is crazy how that works. And that glitch is on day one as well. Oh, it's yeah. Oh, yeah. Day one. 11, 11 years. 11, wow, the game's 11 years old. Yeah. So here we have a very short kind of cutscene. Basically, we can't shoot poles in this room until it's finished moving. But uh, that's only a couple seconds now. We hit that button. We're going to do a big pre strafe here. So we're just building up some speed. Um, we actually can't go too fast because of some weird stuff in this game. But we're then going to grab that cube, throw it onto the button, and finish the room. And again, small little dialogue skip there that you probably missed. Yeah. Uh, Baster. Now that you've kind of seen most of the run, what is your prediction on the final time? The final time, so we're just about almost 39 minutes. So I'm going to say 45, a low 45. Low 45, OK. OK. Also, that map happened. Oh, yes. That one, when you have fly, that map's really broken. You can just fly straight to the end. We also lost fly there as well by touching a funnel. Right. Yeah, yeah. So now we're just going to be hopping normally like you saw before. Uh, this map's kind of crazy. You missed it there because it was only for a frame, but we shot on a great, and now we're at the end. Yeah, that shot at the end is not obviously normally supposed to be there. Just uh, I, an oversight's kind of a mean word because, like, how do you expect something like that? Yeah. But the portal placement, the portal placement code is a bit buggy, and you can shoot portals sometimes on like opaque or transparent grates that you're not supposed to. Again, also used in the full game run as well. Oh yeah, that route is mostly used in full game run, but obviously not as fast. Not nearly. <laughs> yeah. So this here is Stop the Box. Uh, this is actually not the human route. We're going to grab this cube and jump over there, which saves having to fling a tool. We chuck the cube onto the button, uh, and then again, we're done. We have a little bit of to wait for dialogue. It's a pretty good cube throw, though. Yeah, pretty yeah, it's a good cube throw. Obviously, that cube throw is not done in normal runs because it is so inconsistent. Maybe like one in a hundred. Um, I think it's a bit better than that if you're good at it, but it's, yeah, it's not... The it's not that fast, not that method. No, yeah. yeah. Uh, this map is kind of insane, but it's also kind of funny because because of dialogue, we just have to wait around a little bit because finishing the level at the exact right tick uh, lets Gladys interrupt Wheatley, and we just kind of have to wait for that. The route here is actually really easy. We're just going to use some slanted portal abuse, like I mentioned earlier, which flings us straight through the door. And there, you might have heard how Gladys interrupted Wheatley. That's what we were waiting for. Yeah. Um, that only happens at a specific time. In a normal full game run, you would actually have fly for this map, and then you would preserve fly into this next map. But as you can see, the task route doesn't need fly. Because, yeah, so uh, funny story. This map's a bit crazy. Uh, what we do is we super reportal through this laser grid, which doesn't kill us because of the invincibility. We then go to this weird, not oop, but like it area. We did a cube clip straight through the floor. We're hopping through this area and going to the next map. This skips the entire map plus a huge funnel ride. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Shout out to MLUG for tasking this part. Oh yeah, I did the start here. It's in incredibly convoluted for no reason. It just looks cool. This part is also on a timer as well, so it does not have to be this convoluted, but it is fun. Yeah. So here we're just going to wait for a second, and then we're going to do a really crazy fling. Um, 
right across the room here. We're going to throw this cube into ourselves twice and end up going straight through the door. You weren't expecting that. That's insane. That was not. Yeah. Not at all. In re rehearsals, you were talking to us about the gel strafe, and we were just looking at each other. <laughs> yep, there used to be an order route. I saw Emlo casting for a while, but I guess that's not faster yeah. anymore. We found a lot of routes in the past. Yeah, we found months. a lot. I believe it. Yeah, hey, I so just much. want to say, we have passed over $200,000 raised towards that bonus game of the Tazbot Beta Showcase. Just $24,000 left. We, can make it. we have one chapter left. Can you do it? Chapter. I believe you guys can do it. I believe. Not a lot of time left, though. We're going pretty darn fast. So, Napoleon Polarity, this map's funny. Can't even, why don't you take this one? Uh, yeah, so in this map, instead of going through the door, we're, or Crazy House specifically is going to do a lot of complicated stuff that I cannot explain. But by skipping the start of the map, essentially, we skip the dialogue at the start of the map, which allows us to activate the ending dialogue as soon as possible, uh, which besides, that essentially means that we skip having to wait, uh, which makes our bus route start earlier, if we're still using that analogy. Yeah. So we're now coming into chapter nine. This map is called Finale One. Uh, it's actually mostly just like flying around. Uh, it's pretty much the human route done quickly. Yeah. So uh, now that we're just kind of flying here, Baster and I, are you excited I for the Finale Four skip that we definitely got? Skip. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Finale Four skip? Okay. The longest map, in, or one of the longer maps in the run was a skip that no one knows exists. Yeah. yeah. Excited to see it. Yeah, so just for context, for anyone who doesn't know, Finale 4 is the last map in the game. Um, that current, and like for 11 years, people have been looking for ways to skip it. We currently don't really know of anything. Yeah, and it's kind has of a gone running joke. At least insane. anything in this category, with any percent, with save load glitches, there's a few ways to skip it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Crazy How is literally gone insane trying to figure out, but there's currently oh, yeah. no known way to do it, unfortunately. Anyway, uh, now that Finale 1 was just kind of flying around, we're going to enter Finale 2. And this map is also just flying around, but I think Mlug wants to talk about something special we're going to do. So, yeah, at the start, you may remember earlier in Wake Up, I was talking about wrong warps. Uh, uh -oh. There's actually, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, the start of this is going to be fairly normal. We're just going to slope off the bottom of these stairs to get some down. Normal, speed. then we're still flying over the entire Okay, map. yeah. Well, it's normal for us. Normal for a speed up. Um, but here, we're going to do something a bit weird. We're going to portal over to an area we don't normally go to. We're going to get Quantum Crouch. We are going to peek into this room. Strafe over the end trigger is actually behind that wall. By walking into it in a specific way, we run up to the middle of Finale 3. That we just like, skipped half a map. This is the end of the next map. Literally half the map. 15, 18 seconds. Yeah. Thank you, all of our tassers who uh, figured yeah. that out. That makes this map one of the shortest in the game. Yeah. So also, here we actually, oh yeah. yeah, funny story. Normally you lose fly there. Uh, it turned out that it was so, because it, it loses time in this map to have fly. But it turned out it was so much quicker to keep it there because it saves like three seconds of Finale 3 that it's quicker to just do Finale 4 with Crouch Fly. Yeah. Uh, as you can see here, we're about to get granted so we can do Finale 4 uh, with Fly. Anyways, uh, Mlug, there's actually something interesting in this map, so I think you might want to... Yeah, so um, at the start here, what we're going to do is... Um, what you're going to be talking and in a second, we're going to jump into him. So in this game, uh, you effectively have two hitboxes. You have a normal one which is used for like most things, and then one which is used for some parts of physics interactions. And the second of those, through a glitch called PPD, Player Physics Decimation, is able to rotate. Uh, so the place we're standing right now is actually very specifically calculated, and it's causing that box to very slowly rotate um, because of that glitch. So in a moment, Wheaton's going to be talking for a while. Um, and it's like we've got a minute of cutscene here while he talks. But while that box is rotating, um, we're going to, well, in a second once it, it's done rotating, we're going to go to the other room and just about now, Wheatley's going to throw his bomb at the pipe and um, spray conversion jello all over the room like normal. The place we're standing here is also very uh, specifically calculated. Our hitbox is now rotating faster. In general, the more rotation you have on it, the faster you're able to get even more. Yeah, I know it looks boring, but I promise there's something as incredible is happening behind Yeah, yeah. It's, it's real, we promise. Um, so that movement there, where we walked back a bit, is making it rotate even faster. We're going at about 1.3 degrees a second now, which doesn't sound like much, it's a lot. Um, so, annoyingly, we have to wait here for a few more seconds, which looks a bit stupid, but Not again, I promise things enough. are happening. Uh, we need 63 degrees of rotation, which we'll be getting about now. We're going to grab this core, fly straight across the room, uh, and slope off of this ceiling into the other end of the map. Uh, this area isn't out of bounds, but it's outside of the normal playable area. We're strafing around here, we're going to drop the core, 
And what we're going to do is jump on top of it. Because of a glitch with that rotated hitbox, we clip straight into That's the stairway That's four skip. Yeah. That I is bet you guys didn't believe it. It's real. But 11 years in the real. making. We found that eight days ago. Yeah, we found that eight days ago. Had to task it, whipped it up right in two days, and then got the render. So We've been working on it for months, and time will be coming up right about uh, and time. now. Thank you for catching that one, Emlyn. Yeah. Again, uh, if you don't realize what just happened, Finale 4 skip has kind of been a meme for about 11 years. How much time did that just save? Uh, Finale 4, it saved 45 seconds. seconds. Yeah, 44, 45 seconds. Uh, we've been kind of huge time save. We've been looking for that for 11 years. It's been a meme because no matter what you threw at the map, nothing seemed to work. But then eight days ago, Kersey Howe and Sehun found the final puzzle piece. We were able to put it all together, make a task, and all we had to do was uh, not talk about it for eight days. Yeah, which, which was, was surprisingly hard. difficult. It surprisingly was. difficult. I had no idea that that was possible. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't until eight days ago, apparently. Well, yeah, exactly. No. There's, um, like, Kersey Howe and Sehun have been working on that for months, um, and only the other yeah. day did find. Oh, also yeah, and also Cloud because of that skip, Cloud's head is invisible, which is kind of funny. And the official final time, official final time, time according time, to our rules, which is not the time below, 47, 47, 13, and 33 milliseconds. So there you go. That's our time. Here's the credits. Everyone who's worked on the run, shout outs to Burger40. Uh, Zy Martin, is there anything else we have to say while this credits are rolling? I honestly don't think What's so. What's worth mentioning is the human world record is 56 minutes. Yeah, 56 Hot, yeah, 56, minutes. 50, what, 58? 57. 57. Yeah. So that uh, is over 10 minutes faster. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, make sure to get your final donations in. Oh, yeah. We, uh, we want to get that Ocarina incentive. Time. How close are we? Mello, how are we doing on that uh, Ocarina of Time incentive? We have just over $12,000 to go. Oh. Oh, come on, guys. I, guys, come we got to I really want to see that one, guys. This. Can't be the only one in the task block. These, the, the train started just 10 minutes ago, and in that time, we raised over $23,000 through, through those trains, as well as through other very important donations. So thank everyone so much. Keep that train going. Keep the train going. Yeah. Still have a little yeah. bit of time. Can I read some donations? Uh, oh, yeah, please. Okay, Cartridge Blowers donates $25. They say, bring me portals. Bring me portals to Spider-Man. A limerick. This run is anything but plain, and I think it's hurting my brain. Shoutouts to Mello and these talented Tass fellows. Also, five tickets, please, for the train. Woo! Woo! Love those trains. Wob Blanks donates $5 and says, First time donating, and for a great cause. Let this, let's get this $5 donation train going for the beta showcase. And then Dumple donates $1,000. And they say, oh. robots, yeah, give it up. They say robots are pretty cool. But let's not forget what makes humans truly special. Being able to click on all the pictures that contain bicycles. Thank you for another fabulous <laughs> event for a great cause. Yeah, well, uh, that's our task, so. The world premiere of the Portal 2 task, yeah, the first premiere. ever. Hope yeah. you enjoyed Woo! it. A year in the making. Yeah, year in the making. Thank you all. Wow. Wow, that was just such a fantastic run. What do y'all think? Such a fantastic run. And I just heard 10. I think that means we're counting down the last few numbers, right, to 25,000. Oh, nine, eight, math. I can't do math. Okay, we have a donation from 01010100, for $10. They say, my robot brothers and sisters, all week we've seen human speedrunners with their puny flesh. Let's start a 10.00 donation train to see how a real bot plays. Ocarina of Time! Y'all are really hyped tonight. Oh, wow. We're happy. Okay, we're going to be right back after a short break. Don't you go anywhere.
Yeah, thank you, Twitch chat. Woo! Okay, 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 thank you, everyone. We have an incredible audience. We have it. Mr. Tazbot is visiting me at the table. I'm so excited right now. Okay, all right, everyone. I'm gonna read one quick thing for you all. So hang tight with me because I need to tell you about the GDQ hotfix. You know, speedrunning isn't limited to AGDQ and SGDQ. You can watch every weekday night at 7 p.m. Eastern and weekends at 1 p.m. Eastern here on Games Done Quick with Hotfix. We have 22 different shows with specials on the weekends. For more information, go to gamesdonequick.com forward slash hotfix. Now, speaking of those special events, oh my goodness, they are so special. We have things like Frame Fatales. Give it up for Frame Fatales. And just last weekend, we hosted the very first ever GDQ Juneteenth celebration, which I had the fortunate chance to be a part of, celebrating black independence. And that was just an incredible weekend. And again, hot fix. All right, one last donation. This one's pretty fun. Just Dandy donates $1,000. And they say, this is a triumph. I'm making a note here. Huge success. I think so, too. Right now, we have an interview ready for you with Kizaron. Go ahead, Kizaron. That was like the most excited anyone's ever sounded to say my name. <laughs> so, so thank you, Mello. Uh, I'm Keyseron here, and I'm joined by the Celeste.SMC runner, Mr. Mighty Mouse. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing very good. It's been a good, good, been a good week so far. It has, it has. Now, anyone who doesn't know who Mr. Mighty Mouse is, this is our chance to get to learn a little bit. So what got you into doing all these Mario mods? Um, way back in the day, I watched The Completionist, the Super Beard Bros, they did a, like, save state playthrough of the original Kaizo trilogy. Mm -hmm. That means save stating every jump that works. But I, I as a newbie Marby, Mario player, thought it was crazy. And I was like, I kind of want to do that. <laughs> and then it just spiraled out of control into <laughs> what you see now. Now, you are doing Celesta SMC, probably, in my opinion, like the most ambitious and complete mod of Super Mario World. Um, tell us a little bit about it. Um, so it's, uh, it's a Mario game. It's a loving tribute to Celeste. It uses a lot of the Celeste mechanics uh, you're familiar with, the dashes, the wall jumps, even a lot of the like, tech like wave dashing. And a lot of the levels you'll recognize are like, based on the levels from Celeste as you go through it, which is, uh, which is pretty cool. It's, it's, a, it's a nice little blend of the two games. Now, what else is pretty cool is this is your first in-person GDQ run. You have done two remote runs of other mods. Where would you say Celeste ranks with those other two that you've done? I would, I would say casually as a game. It's not too bad. It's very intermediate. But as a speed run, and once you start cranking up the speed run, it starts getting very hard. It's probably at the high level we play it, probably the hardest speed run I've done. I'm going to pivot to a social media question real quick. And we talked about this before the interview, so it's actually an interesting <laughs> answer we're going to get here. But this is from at Sir Fristy, and it's, hi, hello. What's the most difficult part, and how long did it take you to get it right for the first time? I would say overall the most difficult part of the game is in the run, it's not in the run we're doing, it's Farewell. And if you know the OG Celeste, you know Farewell is just a massively long level, and it's a difficulty spike. In the runs we're doing... I would probably say Golden Ridge because I was a tester for the game and Golden Ridge has the same wind physics mechanics that the original OG Celeste had. And when you first encounter wind physics in any game, it's, it's a rough go through. So that one, that one took me a couple hours to grind my way through it. Now, you mentioned Golden Ridge and we know that there's a bunch of different levels in this. So what would you say is your favorite to run? To run. Golden Ridge is really good because the wind physics... Even though in a casual run they're awful, in a speed run we can really abuse those mechanics and do a lot of skips. Uh, but I think overall it would be Reflection. Because Re Reflection, not to spoil it, has my favorite part of the game for like all time. I think it might be my favorite part of any game. Now obviously Celeste.SMC is a blend of Celeste and Super Mario World. So with that in mind, 
for any new runners or current runners, what do you think is more important to get into this specific mod? Do you think the Super Mario mechanics are more important, or do you think the Celeste mechanics are? I would say the Mario mechanics probably are, because it's still a base Mario game. It uses Super Mario World's physics. That being said, when it came out, we did see a bunch of Celeste OG runners who have never played Mario games tackle it with just only a, a mild amount of suffering, just a little. <laughs> but, uh, but it is a Mario game at its heart. So. Now, one last question for you before we go ahead and I believe we're throwing it to Scent. Thumbs up? Yes? Okay, cool. I, I'm professional at this, I promise. Um, so since you're now tackling this solo, does that change how you're going to approach the run now that it's no longer a race? Uh, a little bit. I mean, you know, there's, there's crazy things you can decide to go for if you're ahead in a race. And now you just kind of like maybe gauge if you're ahead in your estimate to go for them. But... Uh, it, it'll, be, it'll be pretty standard, yeah. Well, I very much look forward to that, which is going to be after the task that we just met, or excuse me, the beta that we just met. I'm going to go ahead and super turbo hyper dash it over to Scent at the prize table. <laughs> Thank you so much, Keys. And like Keys mentioned, we are very clearly prepared. We are very clearly professional. We are very clearly ready for this throw. And I did not forget to grab about three things and run an entire lap around our really? set during the Keys interview section of that. <laughs> Don't worry about five that. Minutes. <laughs> Didn't happen. We're all good. And you know what else is good? The great prizes we've got on this table and beyond because there are so many amazing ones. All the prizes I'm going to talk about right now end at the end of our next game. That Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Tass that you all got into the marathon with your amazing generations to Doctors Without Borders. But if you have not donated already, let me tell you, you absolutely need to. The prizes are fantastic. $100 in a single donation is going to get you entered into everything that I am about to talk about. We've got some cool stuff. First off, for $25 from Meghan Solo, we have a lovely Tetris throw quilt worm. If you want to just bring that in here from stage right for me. It is fantastic. Got a bunch of Tetromino pieces, as you can see. By the fact that it is overshadowing me, it is a full-sized, beautiful quilt. Absolutely incredible. It's uh, got a little bit of a, a sparkle to it as well. Really big fan of the idea. I love the different like colors and floral patterns representing the different Tetromino pieces. $25 minimum donation before the end of that task coming up right next. Thank you so much to Megan Solo for sending it up to us. Uh, $25 is also more than 15 which is what you need to be entered into this lovely Sun and Moon Pokemon Spinner pin here. It is a pin of Umbreon and Espeon with the sun and the moon, and it spins. It's, it's really cool. That's so cool. Yeah, the sun and the moon spin around, and this is awesome, and this is also probably karmic punishment for me not ranking Umbreon or Espeon on my EV tier list. I'm sorry, they're both still irrelevant evolutions, but this pin is really cool. Thank you so much to Happy Tama for sending it out to us. It's adorable. $15 minimum donation. Also for a $15 minimum donation from our good friend Puzzle P, we have this lovely painting of the Deku tree entitled Dekuna Matata. What a wonderful phrase. Dakuna <laughs> Matata. It's, it's probably a passing craze because there's only one of them, but it's pretty cool. You should definitely get in a $15 minimum donation before the end of that task if you haven't already. Get yourself entered into a chance to win that beautiful painting from our good friend Puzzle P. Now from Duke Firebird, we have a lovely set here of uh, Perlers corresponding to one of the last games we saw, Ocarina of Time. You've got all six of the dungeon medallions from the game, Light, Forest, Fire, Water, uh, Spirit, Shadow. Spirit, Shadow is the correct order. As much as we all misremember it as children, that is unfortunately the truth, as well as the Kokiri Emerald, Goron Ruby, and Zora Sapphire. They all come together as a set of nine Perlers, I believe, for a $10 minimum donation. Thank you so much to Duke Firebird for sending those out. They are fantastic. From Magical AF Boutique, we have something that is definitely Magical AF. We have a lovely piece of Zelda scale mail. This is effectively armor. Uh, I'll, you know, kind of lift one up here. It's a bunch of individual little scales all rippled together to make a singular art piece bound together by metal rings on the back. It's super cool. Again, I, I love prizes in just you know, super unusual mediums. And I mean, armor, that's a pretty unusual medium. $25, you could take home this lovely scale mail banner with the Triforce on it. Uh, make sure to get those donations in before the end of that Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time task, though, if you would like to do so. 
Uh, from our good friend Cute Monster Props, we have a set of resin rupees. You get four of them. You get the green one rupee, the blue five rupee, the red 20 rupee, and the purple 50 rupee. They all come with their own lovely little stands. You can see a great picture of them right down here. Absolutely fantastic set. $20 minimum donation. Again, before the end of that Ocarina of Time test, make sure to get it in. Also, we've got my friend who is too big to fit on this table. Yes, the Mareep. I, I couldn't put the Mareep up here because no one would be looking at me. You'd all be looking at the Mareep. I can't blame you. This is an excellent sheep. Thank you so much to Alta Biscuit for sending it out to us. It's a $50 minimum donation. You've got to get that donation in before the end of Left for Dead a little bit later tonight. Definitely do so. You want this life-sized Mareep. Like, come on. I'm just going to leave it here, and we're going to see how many people are looking at the Mareep and how many people are looking at the other prizes by the end of this segment. Who's that man back there? All I see is sheep. <laughs> Thank you, Peanut Gallery. <laughs> uh, but we do have something else really special that I want to talk about. In fact, I'm going to get up and bring this a little bit closer to the camera, because from our friend Sky Berkson, we have an incredible Temple of Time domed miniature. Again. This entire thing, aside from the base and the obvious glass dome, is somehow made from paper. So I'm just going to hold it right up to the camera here if we can get a good focus on it. Look at the level of detail on that. You have the little link standing in front of the pool of water. You've got the Sheikah stone off to the side, the trees, the bushes, all of the topiary there, the windows of the temple itself. All of this is paper somehow. I don't understand it. It's a $100 minimum donation for this one-of-a-kind amazing miniature from our friend Sky Berkson. Sky, thank you so much for sending this out because, again, it's just, it blows my mind with how incredibly detailed and fantastic this piece is. And that $100 donation is going to get you halfway entered into our grand prize, which is a cumulative 200 donation across the entire marathon. So, hey, $100 now, $100 tomorrow, you're going to be entered into it. And it is a wonderful prize pack from our friends over at Heroic Replicas. It includes the Falchion from uh, Fire Emblem, the legendary Blade of Marth, as well as Sly Cooper's Cane from the Sly series, and a cool, uh, couple of other cool things that Heroic Replicas has done, including the Mermaid's Pendant from the Stardew Valley series. Definitely super Super cool. Make sure to get your donations in and make sure to get them in before the end of this next run. Uh, I'm not going to keep you from it any longer. You've all donated for it. You've all cheered for it. You've all clapped for it. Now let's get ready for it. It's Ocarina of Time Beta Showcase with the Taskbot team. Almost sent. Almost. We're going to read some donations first. All right, let's start with this one. Ellie donates $500. And they say, love GDQ and all you guys do. Makes my heart happy to see all the love and good this community can do. Thank you for that, Ellie. That $500 went to Doctors Without Borders. And you know what else is going to Doctors Without Borders? Hopefully in a few minutes, $1.6 million. That's hype. Zombie Epidemic donates $25. They say, I hope everyone is having a wonderful week. Less than three. Incentive goes to announcer's choice. Hey, that's me. Zombie Epidemic, I'll do you justice. I'll put that towards the Left 4 Dead 2 Last Stand Showcase. And thank you to Binder News for your $100 donation. They say, I missed the $10 train, so here's an extra zero to make it up for Zelda, or to make up for it. Zelda, go! You know, I was checking out the Yeti's website earlier, and there is just this fantastic t-shirt of the one and only Mr. Tazbot. So cute, you should check it out. But you know what's really cute? The real Mr. Tazbot, and I'm ready to see it. Right now, we have The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, Beta Showcase by Mr. Tazbot and crew. Give it up for Durango AC. 